All right, welcome to Discovery Church. Make some noise if you're excited to be in God's house today. Come on. Amen. Amen. Welcome everyone. Join us online from wherever you are. We're so glad that you are here. Hey, make some noise and welcome everyone viewing online with us, you guys. Come on, welcome them. Come on, so glad you're here. We're in week number two, you guys, of this series, Focus, and it started last week, uh, January 1st. The year started for us Sunday, January 1st. We started this new series, and I'm really excited because I, I do think that this can be one of the best years of your life. But if you'll fix your focus, God can fix your future. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, this is the new year. How many of you are excited about the new year? How many of you, like, how many of you still approach every new year and you're like, yes, it's new goals and new start? And seriously, how many of you do that? Any, any, all right, the 10 of you. Praise God. I'm so glad <laughs> y'all are focused. <laughs> So, but I hear, and there's many of us though, uh, you don't, you kind of don't approach the, the year with the same kind of anticipation or excitement that, that maybe you used to, and I, I can probably, you know, guess why. I talked about it last week. It's because we've gone through enough of these new years and these new resolutions that we figured out, it don't work, man. It's just like, it's the same year. It's the same thing. And, and so the statistics tell us that like 80% of us give up on all of our goals and resolutions before Valentine's Day. So before mid-February, we stop like pursuing any of that stuff. And so that's kind of, so, so history has taught us that really there's no difference. So we, instead of, instead of like having hope, you learn to cope. And I just don't think that, that God so loved the world so that we can cope through it. I believe God came to give us victory and transformation. How many of you still believe in a God who changes lives and a God who, who transforms, that there is transformative power in Christ and that every single one of us are on this journey of transformation, yet we approach God, we approach our year without any expectation. And, and I want to challenge that. I want to challenge your faith and your expectation in this journey. You know, in, in, in 2 Timothy, the apostle Paul told uh, Timothy was a pastor of a local church. He said, there's going to be certain people in the community of faith. He said it like this in 2 Timothy, I believe it's chapter 3. He said, they, they act religious, but they reject the power that could make them godly. And so what I, what I want us to do is like, because like, we approach this year without any, like we're doing religious stuff, but there is, pow, there is transforming power in God. And are we expecting it? Are we seeing it? Are we, are we realizing the transforming power of God, man, I don't want to be a church that just pretends for a day. Come in and try to, try to pretend and think better and then go out there and live the same life. No, there is transforming power in Christ. Can I get a better amen, somebody? I believe it starts with focus. If, you, if we can fix our focus, God can fix our future. Let, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Let me lay some groundwork to where we're going today. This is our kind of one of our theme verses, Proverbs 29, 18. It says, if people can't see... What God is doing, one of your translations says, uh, or many of them, he says, where there is no vision, people perish. So if people cannot see what God is doing, if they don't have the vision of God, they stumble all over themselves. No wonder we're kind of just entering another year without uh, the expectation, without the anticipation of the fresh start and the new beginning and the goals of what God can do. Of course, of course. Why? Because I don't got the vision of God. I've been stumbling every year. Am I preaching too loud for you guys today? But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed, and that's what I want. I want to take you on a journey over the next few weeks and this year to, to experience the, the most blessed year of your life. And if you fix your focus, God can, can fix your future. Let me, let me read Ephesians chapter 4, and I'll tell you the title of today's message and where we're going. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 through 24 says this. In reference to your former way of life. So every one of us have a former way of life, the way that we did it, you know what I mean? That all, the, all that, the, the, all, the previous years, and the reference to all that former way of life, you were to rid yourself of your old self, meaning like the old habits, the old mindsets, the old patterns that got us here, which is being corrupted in accordance with its lust of deceit. So, so lust and deceit, so through the cravings of the old nature and the lies that we believe, it's corrupting us, that old, it's corruption. And that you have been renewed, someone say renewed. renewed. Renewed in the spirit of your minds. And that's actually how you put on the new self. That's how you have the new self, by being renewed in the spirit of your mind. The title of today's message is Focus on the Renewed Mind. Focus on 
the renewed mind. Because to see what God is doing, to get the vision of God, then we must focus on renewing our mind. Let me give you a definition that didn't make its way because I have so much content today. It didn't make its way into the handout, but, but here's what a definition of a renewed mind is. A renewed mind interprets life, so what we're living, all of our life, and we interpret it through the lens of God's word and through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Rather than interpreting life through the lens of my own experiences and my, and my woundedness and my trauma and my opinions or the opinions of others. No, no, to, to be in a renewed mind, to focus on a renewed mind, I interpret my life through the lens of his word and through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. That is what it means to have a renewed mind and to focus on the renewed mind. Um, let me give you some truths about the renewed mind today. And and, and to get to the place of the major thesis of today's message, I'm going to use these three truths about the renewed mind, and then we're going to unpack what a renewed mind looks like and why it's so difficult to stay in the renewed mind. It's going to be a little bit of a deeper teaching today, and we're going to get to work, though. How many, how many want to get to work today? You ready to get to work with me? Okay. This is probably one of the most uh, important, impactful messages that um, I will preach this year. This is, this, is, this is your focus. We're to focus on the renewed mind, and you're going to find out why it's so important. But let me unpack it. Let me get to the major thesis of today. I just need to take a few building blocks to get there. Okay, write these down. The first truth is this. Number one, I will never change my life until I change the way I think. Okay, so your life doesn't begin in the doing. It actually begins in the thinking, because Proverbs tells us, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. See, a lot of us are, are so heavily focused on developing new habits But what we need to be focused on is escaping old mindsets. Because those new habits that you want to develop every year, it's very likely that they're continued to be undermined and thwarted by your old mindsets. Much of what is being taught in culture today isn't even, it's not to transform, it's not the transforming power of God. Much of what is even being taught in the church is not transformation, it's behavioral modification, not the power of transformation. And and it's like you can try to manage the symptom of the behavior for only so long, but getting to the root of the problem is what actually brings change. So you cannot focus in the, the doing. It's, you got to focus in the, the thinking, okay? Second truth. I will never change the way I think until I renew my mind, okay? The, the renewed mind, listen to me, it's the target of the Lord in your life every day of your life. This is what God is doing, how he is actively involved in your your life. This is what God wants to do. He's trying to position you to a place that you you, you are renewed in your mind and thinking like Christ. That's his goal. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 tells us this. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be, say it, transformed by the renewing of your mind. That word transformed If you go look at Matthew chapter 17 at the Mount of Transfiguration, when Jesus was transformed, we were were told that he he was meeting with Moses and Elisha, and his his countenance changed. We call it the Mount of Transfiguration. Well, the same word that was used for Jesus' transfiguration is the same word right here in Romans chapter 12 too of transformation, that that his body, Jesus' body, was revealed the reality of another word. He was transformed in that passage, it's the same word here in Romans 12 too, the renewed mind. It reflects the reality of another world, just like Jesus' body reflected the reality of another kingdom. Now, it's important to understand that faith does not come from your mind. Okay, it's, it's, The Bible says that it's with the heart that a man believes into righteousness. So faith is not a matter of, of understanding or an intellectual matter. But what we do need to understand is that a renewed mind creates the context for faith. Much like the, the banks of a river create the context for the river to flow. The renewed mind creates the context for, for faith and the kingdom of God to flow through your, through your life. The renewed mind is, is not a product of self-discipline. I believe discipline is very important, but faith comes from surrender, not striving. It's the product of yielding to the Spirit of God and the Word of God to think and see differently. Are you all with me still? Okay. Okay. See the, the, the renewed mind. In fact, the unrenewed mind is, is, um, is at war with God. 
okay? The old self, that unrenewed old self is actually at war with God. Let me show it to you in Romans chapter eight, verse seven. The mind governed by the flesh, that unrenewed old nature, that old mind is go that's governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God. It cannot even do so. So, so it's not like, oh, that's just, they're just, you know, they're just being selfish or they're just being inconsiderate. Or that's just gossip. No, no, no. That mindset is actually at war with the nature of God and what he desires to do. Here's why that's important, you guys. Here's the, it's, let me get the thesis of today. Romans chapter, or, or, or I'm sorry, uh, third truth, third truth. That only a renewed mind can receive the revelation and resources of the kingdom of heaven. Only a renewed mind can receive the revelation, the vision of God and the resources of the kingdom of heaven. It, it's not that our thoughts are just different, but the way like, of our thinking is transformed because we think in a different reality. It's, it's not like many of our thinking is earth to earth. No, re re renewed mind is from heaven to earth. That's the transformed perspective. And to be of any use to the kingdom of God, our minds must be transformed. We must focus on the renewing of our mind. Ephesians 1.3, look what it says. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. He has. He has blessed us in the what? In the heavenly realms. Man, I got some blessings up in the heavenly realms? I'd like to see it right here, to be honest. I mean, any of us would be like to see it right here in the natural, like the earthly realm. Come on, I want to see some stuff here. But God says, no, no, he has blessed us but you have blessings in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Now, this scripture is, is a lot like a lot of scriptures. Throughout scripture, we see verses like this using language that is like he has blessed us. And it's present tense and it's indicative, meaning it's, a, it's, it's stated like a matter of certainty, a matter of reality, although we might not see it. It is, it's a certain reality of the kingdom of God that we have. We, he has blessed us, even though... I'm not seeing it right now. I'm not accessing it. See, the blessing is in the heavenly realms, but you must be able to access it and possess it. So, so it's like, it's a, and it's every spiritual blessing, by the way. Every spiritual blessing is in heaven's realm for you and can only be accessed by the renewed mind. So it's like you're, many of us pray, it's like we're going to God, like the teller's window of the Holy Spirit. And we come to the teller's window and, and, and the Holy Spirit's like, what can I do for you? What, what in my realm can I move into your reality? And we're like, I don't know, just your will be done, God. It's just whatever you want, God, and just you're, you're, I'm just your humble. And it seems you humble. It almost seems righteous, but I believe that kind of prayer is an offense to the Holy Spirit. When God has made available to you every spiritual blessing, I have a feeling that God is looking at some of our prayers going, are you kidding me? You got nothing else in your heart. There is kingdoms that need to be, the kingdom of God needs to be advanced. Demons that need to be rebuked. There are gifts that can be released. And you have nothing in your heart to ask me for? Do you not see the brokenness? Do you not see the hurting? Do you not see the advancement? Come on, am I talking too loud for you guys? I'm sorry. I'm yelling, but I'm yelling the, the, about the kingdom. I'm not yelling at you. Y'all feel that okay? I'm yelling about the truth is what I'm yelling at you guys. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing, and it's only the renewed mind that can actually, the renewed mind can access the revelation and the resources. But what is that? So what are the revelations of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, and what's the resources? Let me, let me give you a list, you guys. The revelation of heaven is, and we talked about this last week. If you miss it, you gotta go check this out because this is like, this is available for you when you get God's vision. It's the incomprehensible, invisible, and indestructible. When you have a renewed mind, you can, the impossible, things that are so far away that you can't make sense of, God will give you vision to the incomprehensible and make sense of those things and only is given to those who have a renewed mind. The invisible things in the spirit realm that you cannot see with an unrenewed mind, you have access to with a renewed mind. The things that are indescribable that you cannot make sense of through the renewed mind, God will give you wisdom and sense from God. Okay, that's the revelation of heaven that you can only get from the renewed mind. 
And then there are resources. What are the resources of heaven? There's, and I could have had a big old list of the resources of heaven, but let me just give you a few, and let me just see if this whets your appetite of the resources. The authority of God can only be passed from his kingdom to this reality when you have a renewed mind. The blessing, how many of you want the blessing of God? The blessing of God, okay. It cannot, it cannot get to you when you have an unrenewed mind. It can only get to you when you have the renewed mind. We need to focus on having a renewed mind, anointing and spiritual gifting, healing, peace, joy, hope, love, faith. That could have went on and on. Now there are cheap substitutes of this world you can settle for happiness instead of joy or success instead of life. But there is only from the kingdom of heaven passing through into this realm God's resources of real joy, real life, blessing, anointing, and authority. And some people are like, well, I got the Holy Spirit inside of me, though. Don't I have access because he lives inside of me? No, you do. You have, you have access, but are you possessing? Are you positioned to possess what, you have, what he has blessed you with? Because he has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. But are you positioned to possess it? So we see this all throughout the scriptures, right? That we see there was, there was sometimes a greater manifestation, manifestation of the Holy Spirit, a greater outpouring. It doesn't happen all the time. or also just, But sometimes there was just a greater outpouring. Do you guys agree with me that sometimes there are greater outpourings and manifestations? Why? The, he, every time that happens, you know, there's, there's an ingredient that is there in the hearts of people. It's called hunger. It's either hunger or desperation, sometimes both of them. Hunger and desperation. It's why Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, Blessed, somebody say blessed. Blessed is a kingdom resource that you cannot have access to if you do not have a renewed mind. It is only through the, the renewed mind can you get the blessing of the kingdom of heaven, which is why Jesus is saying, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Okay, so this is, this, so we need focus, man, on on, on interpreting the renewed mind, interpreting life through the lens of his word and through the, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But, but we can all agree that that's pretty hard, right? There's, it's, it's hard to stay in that renewed mind, to stay in the focus of interpreting everything that's happening in my life through the word of God and the inspiration of his spirit because there are enemies to the renewed mind. Enemies. Why it's so hard to stay in the renewed mind is because of these three enemies. Let me give it to you, because it's important for you to identify of why maybe you're getting pulled out of the renewed mind and, 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 tr and stumbling all over yourself and not getting the revelation and resources that God desires to get to you, okay, that he's already made available to you. It's because we have some enemies to get us out of a renewed mind. Write these down. Number one, it's the devil tries to deceive you. The devil tries to to deceive you, which makes sense, right? That this is the primary war strategy of the enemy, lies and deception. When you understand that the primary target of God is that we would be transformed by the renewing of our mind, then it makes sense that the enemy's goal, his strategy, is to cut the supply line of the kingdom of heaven from getting to you the revelation and resources of God. Doesn't it, like if I'm at war with someone, anytime any war tactician knows, when you're at war, what you try to do is you cut the supply route. Which, why isn't the, why doesn't the devil attack in other ways? There are other ways they can attack. No, this is all that he is afraid of. He's not afraid of you, and he's not afraid of me. He's afraid of the kingdom of heaven that is in you. He's afraid of you accessing the revelation and the resources of God. And so the way that he gets you out of a renewed mind is through deception. See, the, the devil tries to deceive you to cut the supply line. Now, if you're a child of God, you got to understand this. The devil can't touch you. Amen. He can't touch you, man, but he can't lie to you. He can make some suggestions for you to bite and believe. Uh, and there's a difference. I get, people get confused all the time. Let me just explain. There's a difference between the deliverance of demonic and the deliverance of deception. Okay? If you're a child of God, you, you, there is no way for the, a demonic spirit to, to inhabit you the same time the Holy Spirit is inhabiting you. That is not of God. That is not of God. There's no way that any demon can inhabit a godly space, the temple of the Holy Spirit. There, that you cannot, there's a difference, though, between the deliverance of the demonic and the deliverance of deception. Okay? From operating from the demonic because of perception 
and operating from the demonic because of possession. The devil doesn't come to you looking like the devil. You guys know that, right? He doesn't make himself known as the devil. He actually, the only way he could fool the child of God is making himself known as something that you would value. That's the only reason why you would buy into it is because you actually value what he's saying. I mean, if he came and you said, I'm the devil, you wouldn't buy into it. But no, no, he comes at you like as something, he actually has to parade his thoughts as virtuous for you to even embrace them. The problem with that way of thinking, it doesn't bear the fruit of peace or of righteousness. Let me show you in James chapter 3. I told you we are going deeper today, okay? You with me? You all with me, okay? James chapter 3, I'm going to read a little bit more than I gave you in the handout, okay? James chapter 3, I'm going to go to 13 to verse 18, and then there in like verse 14, 15 is where we're going to really pick it apart, though. James 3 says this, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy, selfish ambition in your hearts... Don't boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom, and he calls that form, like he's in quotation, such wisdom, it does not come down from heaven. Did you catch that, you guys? It's not, it's not coming down from, from where your revelation and resource is. That kind of wisdom, that selfishness, that bitterness, that offense, does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven, there it is now. I only can access that wisdom in a renewed mind. There is wisdom that comes from heaven, is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Let me back up to where he says, if you harbor bitter envy, selfish ambition in your hearts... Such wisdom does not come down from heaven. It's earthly and spiritual, demonic, bitterness, offense, jealousy, envy. These things carry with it an appearance of wisdom. That's why the child of God would even embrace it. That's why you would embrace being bitter about something or offended about something today. Because it, because it, it makes sense. It has an appearance of wisdom. It makes us feel discerning. It just doesn't bear the fruit of peace and righteous living. If I were to come out, call out the number one work in the body of Christ and in believers today, it's, it's offense. The number one work of the enemy, offense. And it's connected to this. It appears as wisdom because it comes with reason. Have you ever met an offended, bitter person that didn't have a good reason? See, offense and, and, and bitterness just inspired a bunch of people to vote for abortion even though they are for life because it moves people in that way. It has the appearance of wisdom, but it's not. I didn't mean to get political on you. Okay, let me, let, me, let, let, me kind of, let me go to another direction. Offense and bitterness cause, causes a married person to divorce and leave someone they actually love. They even say things like, I have to. Why? Because it has an appearance of wisdom. Hmm. Only a renewed mind is able to receive the revelation and the resource from heaven. So without it, without the, I only have human wisdom and reasoning. Let me go back to Romans chapter 12. Let me read that again, and I'll read to you the very next sentence. Romans 12, 2, remember that one? And then I'll read the very next sentence, what comes after it. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Look what the very next sentence says. Then, then, meaning, okay, once you have been transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, actually his good, pleasing, and Perfect will. It is only the renewed mind that can know the will of God. If you, can, if you do not have a renewed mind, then you cannot know what God is doing, which makes sense why we're stumbling all over ourselves. The wisdom is selfish. It comes from heaven. It's earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. And I know it seems pretty harsh to say that, selfish, that of selfishness, like, like, but it makes sense, right? Like if it's if it doesn't come from heaven, it makes it earthly. And if it is of this earth, then it's unspiritual. And if it is deception, then it's demonic. All selfishness is deception. It's an, it's an attempt to satisfy a craving or fear from self. Which is why Romans 8, 7 says, focusing on the self is actually the opposite of focusing on God. <laughs> 
So, so there's some enemies of why we, it's so hard for us to interpret life through the lens of God's word and the, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It's, there's some enemies of, of why it's so hard for us to stay in a renewed mind. This, the deception of the enemy, he, he parades himself as virtuous, like you have a right to be offended or bitter or gossip or be angry. When, when you posture yourself that way, you have cut the very supply line of the resources of heaven and the revelation of God. There's, there's a, there's, it's, it's hard to stay in this place. Do I choose this lie or do I choose to stay in a renewed Mine. Okay, that's the first enemy. Here's the second. And you, saw, you still with me, you guys? You still with me? The second enemy, number two, is this world. This world around us can pollute the perspective, can pollute the, the perspective of the kingdom of heaven in my life. This is why we're in a time of prayer and fasting in this season. We're, we're, we are separating ourselves intentionally. And fasting doesn't just have to do with food a lot of times. Fasting is a separation from the, root, from the world. I separate myself from the world and I feed on God. And a lot of us have had some negative influences in our mind, and we need to get from some of the pollution of this world. Ephesians chapter 4 tells us this, so I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, and that was the, the type of the world in the New Testament, the Gentiles, in the futility of their thinking. So we're thinking worldly thoughts. We're watching their news and believing it. Where we're watching and listening to that stuff of this world and we're believing and interpreting and receiving it. And because of that, they are darkened in their understanding, separated from the life of God. What's the life of God, by the way? What is the life of God? You want to know what it is? It's a renewed mind. That's the life of God. It's a renewed mind that receives the revelation and resources of God by faith through grace in Christ. That is the target, the goal of God in your life to position you, to get you in the right place through experiences like this and his word and his work in your life to get you under the resources of the kingdom of heaven. The enemy, your, the devil can deceive you and get you out of the renewed mind. This world around you, if you're not careful, can darken your understanding and get you out of a renewed mind. And then the third one, the third enemy you have is our problems. And your problems tend to confuse you. Aren't problems confusing? They confuse sometimes. When you're going through a difficulty, it's hard to see straight. It's hard to, like, to interpret it through the right lens of the Word of God and the, the, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we, in error, ascribe this pain and this problem to God. We're like, God, why'd you do this to me? And, or maybe we're like, God, you, you could have like, done something about it. You could have did something different. And, we and, 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 and these problems are so confusing and if we buy into that if we start to to focus on the problem instead of God we can easily get out of our renewed mind the psalmist like did this often he would show us the tension of problems and how they operate in our mind proverb or psalm chapter 10 David is writing this psalm he says why O lord do you stand far off why do you hide yourself in times of trouble. Now, I want to be very clear, you guys. This is not true. The psalmist David here was writing about the tension or the, the, the problems problems are, okay? That in our problems, it messes with our perspective. It's not a reality that God isn't far off, but I feel that way. So he wrote that down for you not to believe like it's true because it's not, but for you to empathize with it or, or to agree like, yeah, I feel that way too. Because then at the end of the psalm, he says, you hear, O Lord, the desire of the afflicted. You encourage them and you listen to their cry. So what is he? Is he listening or is he hiding? Well, the truth is it's confusing sometimes in the middle of the problem, isn't it? It is. It's very confusing. So what, in the middle of my problem, when I'm experiencing problem, am I going to stay in the renewed mind and interpret my problem through the lens of God's word and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit? Or am I going to let my problem speak to me instead of God speak to me? The Lord told me to slow down a little bit today for it to just sit in, in these moments because I, I tend to preach really fast and just keep going, but he's like, I just knew that some of this just need to sit. Okay, so, so that's what a renewed mind is. That's why it's hard to stay in the renewed mind, but what does a renewed mind look like? Let me give you seven signs of a renewed mind. I'm going to give you a whole list, seven things of what a renewed mind looks like, and here's my hope that you, you not only see these and want, like, yeah, I want that, but you'd be able to see these and go, that's where I, I'm that's where possibly I, I'm not renewed in my mind. I have an unrenewed mind there. There's access, I'm not receiving revelation and resources of heaven in that area. Oh my, God help me in this area to renew my mind. Okay, so let me give you the seven signs of a renewed mind. Number one is you live in hope. 
you live in hope. Any thought in your mind that doesn't inspire hope is rooted in a lie. So when something goes wrong, a renewed mind thinks, oh, this is going to work out. And it's not based on fantasy. It's actually based on the reality of the kingdom of heaven. This is going to work out. I don't know how it's going to work out, but I believe it is. It's going to work out. That's what a a renewed mind, the sign of a renewed mind, is you live in that place of hope. Okay? The second sign of a renewed mind. Number two, the impossible actually seems reasonable. Like, Like when I see an impossible situation, I actually think God's making a way through this thing. I expect for his kingdom to break through in representation to this kingdom, and I just anticipate it. I don't let impossible situations stop me or reposition me from believing God, what his word says, and what the Holy Spirit is saying to me. No, man, when God says he's going to do something that's never happened before, you believe it. That's what a renewed mind believes, that the impossible seems reasonable. Number three, the third sign is you live, in, you live in peace and you don't worry. You live in peace and you don't worry. That's a sign of a renewed mind. See, when your speculations are positive, I like the word speculation. One of the translations of 2 uh, uh, Corinthians verse 10, 5, it's not in your notes or anything, but he says, he says we are destroying a, a speculations and every lofty thing raised against the knowledge of God and taking captive every thought to the obedience of of Christ, a speculations are negative what ifs. That's what they are, negative what ifs in life. Someone with a renewed mind does not entertain negative speculations. What could that look like? Well, it, it could look like this. It could look like you got a doctor's appointment, and instead of you fretting and worrying and removing yourself from the renewed mind to an unrenewed mind, you actually think that you're going to get a good report and good news. God is making a way for me, okay? So, so or, or, when, or when your kids are coming home late, you don't say, oh, my God, what's going to happen to them? Are they, are they, where are they at? Where are they at? What's it? I hope this, and I hope that. I hope this didn't happen. Well, what we're doing in that moment, we are removing ourselves from a renewed mind. And, and, and again, remember, the unrenewed mind isn't just disconnected like, oh, we're just not thinking right. Listen to me. It's hostility to God. It is at war with God. It stands in contrast to everything God wants to do in your life and give to and through your life. So it's not just worry. It's not just a little bit of doubt and anxiety. No, it's hostility and an offense to God. What if your speculations become positive instead of negative? What if you turn your what if, because you got your faith on this side of the what if. You're like, what if this would happen? What if that would happen? And it's unrenewed. But what if you had it on the right side of, of what if? What if God is going to break through? Amen. What if God provides? What if God heals? What if God, what if your speculations would be positive? You know what? That's a renewed mind. That's what a renewed mind does. It has positive what ifs, positive speculations. You live in peace and you don't worry. Number four. You getting something out of this, you guys? Are you getting something, you guys? Amen. Number four. A sign of a renewed uh, mind, you actually like yourself. And, and you rejoice in your weakness, knowing that where you are weak, his strength is made perfect. Okay? I, I don't have a perfect life, but I actually like who God made me to be. See, sometimes it's hard to discern that we don't like ourselves. It was Tozer who, who said this Of all forms of deception, self deception is the most deadly. And of all deceived persons, the self deceived are the least likely to discover the fraud. Here's how you know that you don't like yourself, because it is hard to discern that. Here's how you might know that you don't like yourself. You don't enjoy being alone with you. So you keep it really busy, create lots of activity out there so you don't have to be alone in here. And Jesus said to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And some of you don't love yourself, and you're wondering why it's hard for you to love your neighbor. See, my, my, my personhood, who I am, is not just my strengths and abilities and my gifts. And that's not, that's not, no, I like myself even apart from that. And I like the me that is still in progress, the one that's still in the potter's will, the one that, like, I still like me. And I, and, and when I'm weak, where I'm weak, God is strong. See, when I'm in the renewed mind, I enjoy me. I can just be with me and the Holy Spirit and have a great time. 
I can rejoice in my weakness instead of feel shame over my weakness. The shame is, is, comes from the unrenewed mind. Number five, fifth sign for the renewed mind. Number five, you're quick to forgive. You're quick to forgive. You freely give it. You freely give grace and mercy. In other words, you don't hold offenses and you know how to confront in love. It doesn't mean you never get offended. It's just you never hold on to it, right? Because it's, it's going to happen. Things are going to happen. Things are going to offend you. Just don't, you just don't hold on to it because unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting them to die, right? I give grace to others knowing I need it myself. And even when they're like, you know, they are wrong. Wrong is not the identity that I see them or the lens I see them through. I see them as a child of God who is in progress just like I'm in progress. And they need grace just like I need grace. So I, I, I'm going to be quick to forgive and give grace and mercy freely. Number six, you are confident and thankful. Confident and thankful. I was teaching some leaders a while back, and I was telling them that, that when a leader lacks confidence, the people lack commitment. And one of these students, he raised his hand and said, Pastor, I struggle with arrogance, and I've struggled with it my whole life. How do I know if my confidence isn't drifting back to arrogance? And I just said, it was just the Holy Spirit, I just said gratitude. That's, that's how you know. Because you can't, you can't be thankful and arrogant at the same time. But you can be thankful and confident. Arrogance, uh, thankfulness attributes something to someone else. You gave me something. You, you did something for me, and I am grateful. I am thankful for that. But arrogance is, makes itself the source. It doesn't realize the investment other people are making or have made into their life. So the difference between arrogance and confidence is gratitude. So a sign of a renewed mind, we're confident and thankful. Number seven, you believe in others and you give them the benefit of the doubt. You believe in others and you give them the benefit of the doubt. How many times have you put your motives on other people? I mean, you know, when you judge others' motives, most of the time you're just mirroring back your own motive that you would have in that situation. You know, you don't know, you don't know other people's motives. You, you don't even know your own motives most of the time. You don't know what other people's motives are. I'm not saying that your motives are bad. I'm just saying typically we have many motives operating at the same time for the varying decisions and actions that we're doing. We just don't even know what's motivating us to say or do what we're doing. You've heard me say that we judge people by their actions, but we judge others by, we judge ourselves by, or we judge people by their actions, but we judge ourselves by our intentions, right? But when I focus on the renewed mind, when someone does something wrong, I think to myself, I bet they didn't mean that. They didn't really intend to hurt, intend to be mean. They didn't intend to destroy. That's not what they, that's not what they really want, sort of a renewed mind thing. So, so here's what I would do. I would encourage you to just look at this list of a folk, uh, on this renewed mind. And in the area that you felt the most conviction, that's probably the area where you need to go to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, renew my mind here. Help me renew my mind. And it could be anywhere. Maybe maybe it's in that area of of replacing hopelessness with hope. Maybe that's an area. Or maybe it's in in, in practicing gratitude where you may struggle with arrogance or accepting your weakness as a beautiful part of the way that you can lean and trust in God. How do we, it's the renewed mind. It's the renewed mind that can only receive the revelation and the resources of heaven. So what would that look like this year, you guys, as we begin this year with focus? And we're focusing on last week, putting God first, man, and how the principle of priority, man, and we're putting in every area of our life, not just in some areas, but we put God first, but then we actually focus on the renewed mind that we would interpret our life this year, every day, not just in here, but out there, that we would interpret our life through the lens of God's word and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. If we focus, if we didn't allow the deception of the enemy, the offense, the selfishness, the gossip, the hate, the, all this stuff to just pull us out into an unrenewed mind or the, the pollution that's all in this world or, or even when we encounter problems and trials and challenges that we don't just listen to them and believe in them, but we continue to listen and lean in to God. God, if this year we focused on a renewed mind, you would be positioned for the revelation and the resources of heaven. How do we do it? How do we, let me close with this. How do we like, how do we do it? How do we get a renewed mind? Let me give you a few practices, four of them. A few practices, four practices for a renewed mind. I basically give you three sermons in one. You're welcome. 
Here's number one. Number one is worship. Worship. You know, just before Romans 12 too, you know, be transformed. Don't be conformed to this word. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? And just before that, you know, remember what verse one is? I didn't make it in your notes, but he says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercies, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices. He says this, it's holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual act of worship. Worship. This is actually one, another one of those signs that I could have put in, like a, a sign of an unrenewed mind is you can't worship. It's hard for you to rejoice in God's presence. Only a renewed mind can truly worship him in spirit and truth. So, so when the worship leader was like, everyone, everyone lift your hand and lift your hand. And some of you didn't lift your hand. Oh, but Pastor, it's just, it's just my hands. Are you trying to No, no, no. But, but, but what if it's more than that? What if, what if, in the, what if you're actually making choices um, that were not interpreted through the lens of God's word and through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, but the reason why you could not rejoice and worship God in the place of his presence was something other than his word and the Holy Spirit. And you made that decision based on something else. Can I tell you something? It's earthly, it's unspiritual, and it's demonic. That was hard, huh? You know, let me lift my hand. What do you mean? I'm, I'm, I'm demon possessed now? No, no, absolutely not. No. But the enemy sure did cut the supply line there. Worship. Worship. It gets me in a renewed mind when I worship. Spirit and truth. Man, if I don't care about the opinions of other people around me, I worship. Here's the second practice you can do. We're doing it. Prayer and fasting. See, prayer and fasting, it takes that, the craving, it positions us to a renewed mind. The cravings of our old nature and our old habits and, and, and the cravings of our flesh, man, and it points it toward heaven that I used to satisfy cravings here. I'm going to point the craving toward heaven where all, every spiritual blessing is held in heaven. And when I point my craving there, I create a conduit from heaven to my reality. I position myself for revelation and resource when I give God my craving, satisfy my soul, God. Prayer, fasting, worship. How about this? Write it down. Fellowship. Fellowship, man, you know? Now, some of you are like, well, you're seriously hanging out with people? Going to get me a renewed mind? People are my problem, dude. No, it's, it's, the right, it's the right people. Hanging out with the right people, right? And, 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 and so, there, but there is a balance to this because having a rhythm of silence and solitude is actually an essential practice. You know, and, and while it can maybe initiate the renewed mind and get some revelation and resources when you're kind of, when you're in your silent prayer and your own devotion time, if prolonged and consistent, isolation will deteriorate the renewed mind instead of elevate the renewed mind. Why? Because isolation is just another form of selfishness. It takes on the appearance of wisdom, but it's earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Oh, man, I, are you sensing something shift in this atmosphere? I just I feel like something is moving in the spirit realm. Some of you are catching this. You can't, you can't teach this. I'm trying, but you got to catch this. And I feel like some of you are catching this. It's going to change how you live and walk and think. Worship, prayer, fasting, fellowship. Write this down, the Word. The Word. Hebrews tells us it's living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. Right? It pierces to the dividing, what, soul, spirit, thoughts, and intentions of the heart that God uses his word to align my thinking and renew my mind. Let me close with this last verse and then, and then we're going to pray. Colossians 3.1. Since you were brought back to life with Christ. How many here have been brought back to life? Anyone in this room have been brought back to life in Christ? Okay. This is for you. Here's what he says, since you've been brought back to life with Christ, focus on the things 
that are above. That's where every spiritual blessing is for you. That's where your revelation is. That's where your plans are. That's where your goals are. That's where the resources that you need are to accomplish every, every spiritual blessing is above. Focus on things above. Where Christ holds and on her position, the, the one next to God, the Father. A heavenly throne, a heavenly realm. That's where to focus. Come on, let's fix our focus, you guys. I'm telling you, this is, if this year you focus on renewing your mind and staying there, staying in a renewed mind, uh, this could be the most blessed year of your life. And I'm not just talking about blessed, earthly blessed stuff. I'm talking about heaven's resources, blessing. Heaven's revelation, blessing. Hey, thank you for watching the Discovery Church YouTube channel. Don't stop here. Join the Discovery Online family every Sunday. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream event and share it with a friend. You can also support the ministry by clicking the Give button to help us continue to reach people around the world for Jesus Christ. Thank you again for watching. Go love God, love each other, and change the world.